Hi, I'm Bill Boggs. Welcome to the Corner Table. Today we're having lunch with one of the funniest and the best known women in the world. And she wanted to come here to the West Village section of Manhattan to a soul food restaurant that's been serving up southern style home cooking for 43 years. The place is the Pink Tea Cup at 42 Grove Street with a homey kitchen with creations like barbecued ribs and fried pork chops. It's a place where you can get a lunch special with the works for just $6.25. A perfect setting for lunch with our guests, who's made 30 movies, won an Academy Award, hosted the Academy Awards, is starring on Broadway, and grew up in the Chelsea Projects just about a mile or so from here. It's a corner table lunch at the Pink Tea Cup with Whoopi Goldberg. It's Whoopi Goldberg here at the corner table. Whoopi, thank you for coming. Thank you. It's an applauding restaurant. I love it. How are you feeling today? I'm great. I know you're hungry. I'm starving. <laughs> How'd the show go last night? It was good. I, uh, I think I blew my voice out a little bit. Oh, uh, that's well, you're, It's a new thing, actually. I mean, it's to come back to Broadway after what? 12 years? 12 years and be loud and rowdy. And, and remember those lines? Well, <laughs> I tried. I tried. Well, yeah. Whoopi's a big hit on Broadway, and a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. No, the long way. Yes. Oh, girl, thank you so much. What do we have here? Soul food, dear. I know that. Wings? Wings. And you're a vegetarian? No, I'm not. I'm, and I'm not even trying to be politically correct. I just wanted vegetables today. You I good. I vegetables this week. You are good. Well, you, you, got... can, you can cheat. You can have some of mine. No, no, because I'm a not a big vegetable person. Oh. I'm not a big... I like a little rice. I'm a starch person. Starch. But now, you know black eyed peas. Black eyed peas. And in case they scare you, you got some green beans. Greens are important. And you need to have your okra. I got so the okra. You got, the, you got some okra embedded in corn. Corn and tomatoes. And these are blonde llamas. And they're albinos. Albino I llamas. Seen, I wouldn't expect to get albino. That's why you got to eat soul food. That's why you're in the soul food place. <laughs> and you right. got wings. My life consists of chicken. I have wings. never been a wing eater. Why not? I, I like like larger parts of the of the beast. The yeah. thigh, the breast, a wing. You're a man. Yeah. See, women will go for wings. Men want the big parts, you know? That's but why these I, are delicate. You see this? You could just go like this. We could have a whole conversation. I'll have a big piece of meat in my mouth. <laughs> and I could eat as much of them as I want. Well, I <laughs> ordered, you know what I ordered for my entree? What? Coming up later? Frog legs. <laughs> <laughs> just don't look in the back. You know why? <laughs> why? Well, I was thinking of you and Miss Piggy doing that duet. And it's, Kermit came to mind. Yes, yes, yes. And frog legs. That's what I wanted. All right, so let me try, let me, let me jump into my vegetables here. Mm. Oh, wait, one thing. What? Could we get Sister Mary Clarence to say grace? We want you to give us this day our daily bread and to the republic for which it stands. And by the power invested in me, I pronounce us ready to eat. And help us, <laughs> and help us remember our lines every night. Yes, yes. And a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. People think of you as a comedian, but you're, we, we ever trained as a dancer? No. No, it's from eating chicken wings here at the Pink Tea Cup <laughs> that I move so well. It's a soul. Because I saying. know that there's so much of me, I have to move gracefully to get the rest of it off. Nib, have yeah. you been an exerciser in your life? No. No. Not at all? No. I don't have the discipline. But what about that scene in Sister Act where you're jumping rope? Where did that come from? Because you were great at that. As all girls who are in my age category, jump double that. So age category is indefinable yeah. age. No, it's 40s. In the Women 40s. in their 40s who grew up urbanly right. know how to jump double dutch. You actually grew up like about a mile away from here mm -hmm. in, the, in the Chelsea projects. Yes. And that's why I was wondering, why this restaurant? Why, of all the restaurants we could have gone to in New York, right, or anywhere mm -hmm. to do the corner table, why the pink teacup? I'll tell you. Like 10, 11 years ago, when I came back to New York, I came in here 
Because somebody said, because I was desperate for some soul food. Desperate. What's that feel like when you're desperate for soul food? Can you describe like, the feeling? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, spaghetti is wonderful, <laughs> but I don't want any. You're right. Uh, you know, quiche is cute, but I'm not interested. Right. I need some real food with some gravy and some rice and some fried chicken and all the things that bring back warm memories of so summertime as a kid. I thought it might actually remind you of your mother's kitchen and your mother's cooking. No, so. my mother's cooking was much straighter. Straighter than, than okra embedded in tomatoes and corn? Yeah, yeah, she's like asparagus and broccoli and vegetables. And on, a, on occasion, we would get these wonderful, like, deep fried pork chops and but it was rare, so my brother and I'd be like, what is it tonight? <laughs> oh, sushi, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I wanted you know? sushi today, but I didn't see any, I didn't see any on the menu. No, menu. no, we have catfish here. We have catfish. I like a good catfish well, every now and then. Well, that. You know, like this, you know why? This what? Way, I have to finish that story. Mm. Because when I came in here, this is like the first couple of weeks of my show, they treated me like a queen. I mean, just like, Hey, we heard about you. Come in, sit down. And they just took really good care of me. Right. And I can call this restaurant and on occasion say, I'm, I'm so hungry. And I, they know what I want. There was a bet made today that I was going to have a certain dish, which I should pay that back because I was going to have it, but then I thought I wanted the chicken because I got all excited about fried chicken. You're getting excited but, about the food in general. Oh, honey. Yeah, good food. I'm not a big food person. You know, you don't care about like going to the great restaurants no, and stuff like no, that. No, because I don't know what makes them great. Well, yeah. Lowry's, reviewers. Lowry seasoning salt. Makes oh, a great come on! That's, I can't <laughs> stand that to stuff. me, that's a great restaurant. I, I'm wondering about this neighborhood, though. Like I said, you grew up about a, a mile from here. You go all the way back. Forget food for one second. What? What was it when you were a little girl that made you want to be an actress? Magic. Magic. You could be anything. The largest audiences she's ever faced in her life have been during Whoopi's hosting jobs at the Academy Awards. And you're backstage at the Academy Awards. 30 seconds before you're going to come walking out. The camera's going to be on you. 50 million people all over the world look at you live. Mm -hmm. What's it feel like back there for you? Well, I'm really uncomfortable because it's probably one of the few times that I have to wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> So that's basically what I'm thinking about. Where do you, like when you, so you have to go bra where shopping? Where do I put them? You have to go, no, I know where you put they, them. They built them, they built it into the dress. <laughs> right into the dress. They built it into the dress, so you don't have they know. You don't have to remember to pack the that's bra right. that that's night. That's right, that's what I'm thinking they, about. When we return, we'll find out who discovered Whoopi and why she was in the right place at the right time. Back in 1984. Since then, you've made 30 movies. Yeah. I mean, and your bio, which I have in my briefcase, and it faxed, I have a fax machine without a cutter. So your bio is like three feet long. You've really done a tremendous amount of work in this period of time. Well, yeah. You know, you got to strike while the iron's hot and do it when you can. But you who knows how long it'll last? It's like chicken wings. <laughs> Here today, one and a half hour. Oh, yeah. Your mother told you and your brother you can do anything you want. Yeah. You can, uh, could, what do you want to say to the person who's watching now who's kind of dreaming a dream, but is concurrently saying, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do that, you know. It's not, it's not achievable. Well, nobody ever knows what's achievable until they try. And there's nothing wrong with not getting it on the first try. You know, it depends on what you're going for. If you're going for rich and, and famous, you know, perhaps you should look in another direction because that's never the reason to get into this business because it only happens to, to, a, small to a very small percentage. But, but if it's what you love, you know, if you, if you wake up in the morning and you think, I got to read this play, well, I want to go audition for this thing, I want to do this, I can't think of anything else, then go do it because it's in you. You know, that doesn't say whether you're good or not, but it does say that you have the drive. And we, as we see in many cases, you don't necessarily need the talent all the no, time. No, that's true. But along the way, you had to do some weird things. I mean, you worked as a bricklayer. Well, no, you said out, you were not going to bring that up. You worked as a bricklayer? Uh-huh. You were a bricklayer. I was a bricklayer. And? <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that. What? You worked as a makeup artist in a, in a mortuary? Dead. Yes. On the dead? Yes. How, how, but how is... How's my makeup like compared to theirs? Well, I didn't do it. You look good. You look good. What, what, that must have been. 
No, I can't talk about making up people in the dead while you're eating these wings. You know what? What's that? It was an easy job. Well, you, you don't get a lot of complaints. No. <laughs> Taking my material, huh? Well, you know, it was, it was that or some other sort of seedy work. CD uh, work? Did yes. you ever work in the food service business at all? Waitress? About a minute. I know you've been a bartender on Star Trek. That's right. Why the bartender job? On Why not? On Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I don't want to run the ship. Who wants the responsibility? I had to shave my head. I don't want to do it. <laughs> you look back on the body of work that you did in films. Mm -hmm. You have a couple of particular good, favorites, right? and the wings are good? The wings are Can good. Can I have one? Yeah. Forget that question for a second. Let me just have a wing. Yes, have a No, this is probably going to be like the third wing in, I have life? in my life. Well, look, there's an art to it. All right, so how to show me how we do it. You see, it, was, it looks like this. Pull it apart. It's pulled. So then you can still, sort of have a little thing to talk about while you're hanging. Okay. See? But isn't it just gristle, mm. skin, and deep no. fried batter? No. Pull this off. Pull it apart. But wouldn't a leg have more on it than a wing? Naturally, unless you're like, you know, an eagle wing. Well, it depends. There's a big old piece of gristle on the top of the leg. And a big old piece of gristle on the bottom. And then you got the, that little skinny area where you got no meat at all. Here, at least, you know where you're going. But you were explaining to me. This, I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I've never been a wingman. See? I, and I'm looking at, I mean, it tastes good, but it's See? like a bite or two. Look, right there. Well, what more do you need? True. So yeah. this is the part I go for this part go here? Go for that part. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nice little meaty thing. Let's so I have an omen? Go ahead. No, I'm kidding. They're Look, your wings. See? So you leave a little Wait more a on there. Th yours ended up like this. this. Because I told you, you got to pull this apart. Pull this off of here. All right. See, now put that down. Which down? This. That's down. Then That's you'll come back. back to it later. Roll up the when you When you want it. Mm. See, it's not just hanging there. Like the, you got to eat the whole leg at the same time. Wings, you know? Concept. I'm going to get a couple buckets. Easy to make. Make them at home. Keep That's them in right. buckets and refrigerator. There you are. No, it doesn't work refrigerated. No? No, fresh, always fresh. Always a deep fry. I'm yeah. full with chicken. You, by the way, are not much of a, I, this is, I haven't done research on mm -hmm. this. I can tell. <laughs> you are not a cook or a chef. No. Why did I know that? Why? I don't know. You don't seem like a cook or a chef. I have no interest in food. No kidding. Gee, I can't tell by this. No interest in food. Because I starve myself because I thought it's a food shelf. We're sitting near food. I have to look like I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. You starve yourself I haven't for about eaten. three hours. No, no. I didn't eat any breakfast. It's three o'clock. I would have eaten you if I hadn't gotten the wings quick enough. <laughs> Well, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Whoopi's big career break came when famed director Mike Nichols discovered her off-Broadway one night in 1983. But I wondered, what if Mike had gotten into an accident that night? Or what if he had gotten sick? What if he hadn't come? You ever think about the fate aspect of that? Oh, my whole career is fate. Thank you. My whole career is fate, you know? I, th I used to just think I was lucky and not talented. You really walked around for a long time yeah. taking that? Yeah. I just thought, well, it's just luck. But I'm still here, so I know there's more to it. When I was at the University of Pennsylvania, she's not finished. <laughs> <laughs> when I was at the University of Pennsylvania, <laughs> which is a good school, I used to think my parents must have, you know, written a letter to get me into the school, mm -hmm. that I didn't deserve to be mm -hmm. in the school or something like that. What is it? That, why do we think things like that? You thought you weren't talented, you were lucky. Mm -hmm. I was thinking I wasn't smart, that somebody had fixed it up behind the scenes. Because somehow we're taught early on in very uh, surreptitious ways that we're not supposed to have an ego and that we're not supposed to think really highly of ourselves, that other people are supposed to give us that information. But I think it's really important for everybody to sort of pat themselves on the back and say, yeah, I'm talented enough to have gotten this job. This is, I did this on my own. Yeah, you know, I had help. We need to feel good about ourselves. Well, more yeah, often. and feel proud. But see, pride is, is, is somehow equated with uh, being... Ego, certain, egotistical? Egotistical and self-serving, you know? 
there, if there's one quality, one word that I would use to describe you, both as a person I've known, because you know I've been to your house at time, lo lovely home, overlooking the sea, and we spent a, a little time, a little time together. There's one word I would use to describe what we go over is grounded. You seem like a very grounded person, and I mean that as a compliment. That you're not you're you're not flying all over the place. You're just there. You're within yourself. When did that quality come to you? Yesterday. Good girl, because I thought you had it before then. No, I'm, uh, I'm not as grounded as you think. It's an act? Um, I don't know if I would put it that way just because of the connotation you just put on the word act. Well, let me say it um, another way. Oh, uh, it's an act? <laughs> we all have our faces that we wear in the public. Yeah. And we all have our fronts. And my front is particularly good. You know? I like your back, too. Thank you. <laughs> it's the show, darling. That's why people should do theater, because it takes the weight off. I'm telling you, girl, take my job. You're getting, you're getting in better shape? I'm getting doing? in much better shape. But it's, it's, um, it's how you want to present yourself. Because I got a lot of stuff flying at me constantly from people who want to say hello or little kids or True. you know people that need me to, to make certain decisions or getting someplace on time and your kids on the phone because she needs to talk to you I mean you're juggling a lot and you don't want to scare anybody and you want to accommodate a lot and you want to try to accommodate everybody and and you don't want to do it with eyes bulging and hair on end so you know you take a very sort of literate approach and say, here's what's happening. Here's what I can do, here's what I can't do. Now, that's not to say that once I get in the house, I'm not going berserk, you know, but externally and in the public, I try to have some, some semblance of comportment. Calm. I try. It's comportment, for sure. You know what I think was wonderful is the fact that you're singing on Broadway. I'm glad you think it's wonderful. <laughs> with Whoopi Goldberg at the Pink Teacup in Manhattan. These days, film star Whoopi Goldberg is singing live on Broadway. That the world will never see the same. But I happen to think that singing is one of those things that just takes a leap. You just leap in and you just do it. Yes, and then people either stay or they leap out. <laughs> We've been lucky. Now, how does it feel to, to, to walk out and, what is it, how does it start? Something so familiar. It's horrible. Something familiar. It's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. Something peculiar. Yes. Something for everybody, a comedy tonight. Right, very good, Bill. That's all right. That was Something great. appealing. Something appalling. I'm telling you, Sondheim's going to come after you. You're going to have to get clear. Steve, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> you don't have to work on my frog legs. But is, is that a more nervous making thing for you? Yes. To sing, the singing part? Yes. Yes. It's a very strange thing to, to do. You know? Because well, I have friends well, who are great singers. You know? And you, are you like comparing yourself to them? No, I'm just thinking Jesus, you know. If you want to, oh, can't say Jesus on TV, can you? Jesus, we can say Jesus. Can we say Jesus? Jesus. In a restaurant. We're in a black restaurant where I can say anything. We can say it. Jesus! That's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> where were we? It's, oh, singing. We were talking about singing. It's a strange phenomenon. Don't pass up this chance. I got a bracelet and a pair of pants. He waves. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. He waves. You don't give a He waves. First time anybody, uh, well, I'm going to say the first time we, the general public saw you singing in, in the Sister, Sister Act, Act yeah. doing Heat Wave and that yes. medley at the beginning. Yes. And then there was that terrible audience sitting yes. out there watching. Yes. Did That's you what ever? I'm afraid it's going to be there. Did you? <laughs> oh, hello, frog legs. Goodbye conversation. What What do we have here? Rice. Frog legs. Rice and gravy. Yeah. That's it for you. Whoop. Frog legs for me. Oh, I think I got a pork chop coming too. Oh yeah, okay, pork chop. Do <laughs> so I have a pork chop? No, I think so. What is it about the? Uh, we have a pork chop coming. Yeah. Have I'm you ever had the frog thing. legs here? I'm not a big frog person. The last time I had frog legs was at this famous restaurant in Monaco, called Louis Cans. So from there right. to here. So we'll compare now. 
What are these? Monaco calls the pink teacup. To find out how to make. To get them flown to France. I say. want to know where they're getting the frocks. You want to make a wish here with me? <laughs> Now, how I do I get You know, I can't even look at it because you know what's going to happen. What happened? No, because some dirty remark is going to come out of my mouth. Oh, yeah. Well, I gave you See, a setup. I, I know. You, you did, had a setup. I, you gave me a setup, and you saw how I looked away. I did. I, I wanted to maintain something. Don't start. Oh. See, because I just, I can't even do it. There's a whole thing. <laughs> you hold it. And, you know, I was going to say, you look comfortable. But, you know, <laughs> not to worry. <laughs> Enjoy your program. Can I look at your pork chop for a second? I just yes. want to, yeah. Let's take a very close look at what makes a great fried pork chop, in your opinion. A woman called Dot. Dot. <laughs> Dot makes a great fried pork chop. We will get the secrets from Dot. It looks good. Yes. It looks hard, though. Well, I don't like meat that is not cooked well. So you want it I done. want, yes. I like it crispy. I don't want it just, I don't want it. Oh, he's so nervous. He's on his first date with her. <laughs> How we doing? OK? Sorry. <laughs> No, no that's worries, man. Right. Um, no, you know, I, I don't, I don't like, I don't like meat that isn't done. And I'm reading all these really, there's a lot of books now scaring you about meat. There's book, books, books you know, are scary about everything. Yeah, but this, these books are scaring you big time because you think, ooh, you never heard of mad pig disease, so I don't mind eating a pork chop. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't hear about mad chickens. Mad so chickens, chicken. that's true. You know, mad frogs, but mad frogs. They're everywhere. Well, no, they they have some kind of. Well, there's nothing wrong with frogs. You go ahead. I want to know where the frog came from. This is the a frog, Central Park frog. No, no, what? no. They're they're grown for this. Oh. Frogs are grown for this. So we're they're talking about fed a, a certain way. They're oh. raised a certain way. <laughs> what do you think? They really are frogs' legs. Look at them. They're on my plate. They're on your plate. These they're going in your stomach soon. These frogs have like, they're ranch frogs. Yes, basically. They're laying around. They're going to come right. eat me soon, but I'm having a good time. That's I'm not right. in the pond. And you don't know what they do with them afterwards. That's true. So? What do they do with the heads? Frogs head soup? Some. Yeah, frog eyes. Frog butt. I guess I would go with the frog leg. I'll though. take the leg part, yeah. yeah. I hope it's not well, that. Well, frog butts might be really tender. <laughs> it's like cod cheeks. You see? That's the thing, though, in the seafood restaurants. Cheeks of fish. You aware of that? That's this part, yeah. yes. Like a cod cheek. Yes. I'll take so, you out for some much? cheeks sometimes. No, not me. Okay. Never get me eating that stuff. All right. Ah. Tips here? Tips? Tips on frog leg eating. Enjoy. Okay. While we enjoy, let's check out the Pink Teacup's kitchen and Dot's cooking. My name is Dorothy, and I'm the chef of the Pink Teacup, and this is my chicken wing. I'm putting it in the flour. I'm going to mix it up in my flour with a little pinch of garlic powder, a little salt, some pep paprika, a little beef bits and I mix it all in the flour and I'm gonna put it in there deep fry. Now, I love to cook chicken wings for Wookie. She loves these chicken wings. And every time she comes she has chicken wings and pork chops. And I'm making pork chops and I put it in the basket. We serve grits at the pink teacup with collard greens and black eyed peas. Oh, Wolfie loves these black eyed peas. With cocoa corn and tomato and candy yam. Wolfie loves these candy yam. The lady who taught me to cook this food, her name is Mary Ray, and I've been here 25 years. Meanwhile, back at the frog legs. <laughs> Have you never had frog legs? I before? had them. You I, said you had them in Monaco. Alan Ducasse's restaurant, Louis. Louis Kahn's in Monaco. It's the last time I had frog legs. Well, Louis got nothing on the teacup. All right, here we go. All right. Ribbit, ribbit. Ribbit. Help ribbit. me. Help me, pal. I'm trapped in here. Is it good? It's very good. Tastes like I'm chicken? Good. It tastes like, yeah, chicken, <laughs> hopefully. Because if it tastes like a frog, I'd be in big trouble. See, have you ever, how many frogs have you eaten? Just two or three. Ah, oh, please, come on. I'm telling you. We've all eaten more frogs than that. It was because of your scene with Miss Piggy on, on The Muppet Show that got me thinking of Kermit, and that's why I ordered frog legs. So you're eating Kermit? Is this well, no, like I'm a, a youth thing? Yeah. 
It's not you easy gotta, eating current. No. Mmm. Can I have another napkin, please? Or maybe just a sheet that I can use to help me? Just use your shirt, honey. Mm. We're at home. We'll continue with our homey lunch with Whoopi, and when we return, Whoopi treats the crew to lunch. And because a cameraman Whoopi, can't hey, put his hands... I'll split this with you. No, no, it's, this one's on this. So, Mr. Cameraman, what are you going to have? Welcome back to the corner table at the Pink Tea Cup. As we were finishing our lunch, Whoopi started to wonder who else might be hungry. You know what's hard? I'm I ready feel to hear. bad. Watch. You see all these folks and the cameraman's there, we're just munching back. They're eating back there. Yeah, yeah, but are you, have you guys eaten? Are you hungry? They're hungry. What would you like? It's on me. <laughs> <laughs> you want pork chops? The best dish. Barry? Well, let's, let's see. What's, where's, let me just, now we got to give him some food, honey. He's skinny. <laughs> Watch out, maybe you got to. You got a wire on there. Wait, no. I, oh, that's why I'm not going to go too far. Can I have, let me have a menu. I'll give him a menu. Cool. Yeah. Take a We're going to feed the crew. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, got to feed the crew. And because the no. cameraman Whoopi, can't hey, put his hand. I'll Ooh. split this with you. No, no, it's, this one's on me. So, Mr. Cameraman, what are you going to have? Let me see. Hey, look, it's a 625 lunch special. <laughs> oh, the uh, chicken leg. Chicken legs. Chicken legs. Water chicken legs. What you gonna have? Catfish. Catfish. Hey, wait, let's get that order again. What are you having? I'd like the catfish. Catfish, okay. Behind the scenes? I have the uh, pork chop. Pork chop? How's the barbecue pork chop? The barbecue pork chop is fab. All right. Okay, barbecue pork chop. And what you have? Wings. Wings? wings? So, Eric, you're having wings? You, girl, you better eat something. Hopefully we get dessert too. And yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, it's on me because, you know, it always bums me out that the crew never gets anything. They come, they unpack, and they pack up. We met some fellow diners who were tourists in New York. So they're from Ireland. They're leaving tonight, going back home? Yes, but he, for a Christmas, a Christmas present, he gave her this trip for St. Patty's Day. What a Christmas Isn't present. Isn't that great? Newlyweds are just a... No, no, they're not married at all. Okay. No, no, I know. I know. You know. Well, they, they can't sleep at the White House then. Me either. <laughs> No, I have nobody invited me. They didn't invite me. I'm either. the last guy in America who didn't get invited. Hey, they never asked me to sleep in the White Did House. You hosted Clinton's 50th birthday. That's probably why I didn't ask. Me. <laughs> What's that feel like? The president's down there. You got him in the palm of your hand. It's hysterical. You can do anything you want. It's, that it's leader wonderful. of the free world, and you're in charge. You, oh, yeah. Whoopi. Yeah, right. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm from Chelsea. Whoopi's movies have included Hello? some classic scenes at the dinner table. Mm. Mm. What the hell? No, no! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Then there's a scene in uh, Made in America where Ted Danson eats the wasabi. The wasabi and, and burns his mouth open. Burns his yes, mouth totally it's wonderful. Wide open. Is it difficult doing any scenes with food in a movie or is it pretty much? No, because I don't eat it. You'll uh -huh. notice I always have my fork in my hand, you know, and, and I'll be doing something like this. I'll show you a typical whoopee move in a All food right. scene, you know. So, say I have a line and it's. But you know, I, you know, there was a, and then you get to pick it up and, and then you go, but wait, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know? Because you don't know how many times you're going to have to do that scene. You're going to eat 10 pork chops. And you end up eating, you're bloated. Right. So I eat nothing. Nothing at all. I eat nothing. So this is unusual today to really be eating on camera. Yes. Very unusual. I'm taking these pork chops with me, too. You're not going to eat the whole thing? I can't. Backstage tonight? Eh, maybe later tonight. Later. When we come back, we'll be talks about the man in her life. Welcome back to the corner table with Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi met her man, Frank Langella, on the set of the film Eddie. All right, what's in the box? It's a present. For me? Yes. Good, I like presents. I know, I'm counting on it. Open it. You have a happy point at this point in your life, in your relationship with Frank Langella, whom you live with. Mm -hmm. Right? This is a really fulfilling, deep, good relationship, according to what I've read and right. heard. Right. It's a good relationship. It's deep, and it's fun, and it's equal, and, you know, I don't really, I don't think we give it that much thought. That's cool. You know? 
Because I think if you think about it too much, you mess it up. You'd be well, like, how come you're not thinking of me right now? You know? Yeah. Are you thinking of me right now? Why aren't you thinking of me right now? Well, you can it's really get so deep into figuring that it's stuff out. It's too much. It's too much. But, at, but one of the things I read was that you gave Frank a book uh, written by Rilke. Yes. Right? And he just opened it up randomly to a page. And one of the things that was on that page was saying, when you fall in love with somebody when you're young, you fall in love with half a person. Right. And half, and half a person falls in love with you, half a right. person. When you fall in love with someone later in life, Hopefully, you're falling in love with a, a full, whole person. Hopefully. I think there's a good message in that. Right? Well, but you know, it's funny. I was watching last night the, the show Politically Incorrect. Yeah. And they were talking about some bill that some senator or congressperson wants to put in, making it more difficult to divorce someone if you feel, you know, that, that there's a problem. Harder to get out. Harder to get out. And they had this woman who was sitting there and she's saying, well, you know, it's like entering into a car lease thing and you shouldn't be able to jump out. And I kept thinking to myself, <clears throat> if you're not allowed to recognize your mistakes and own up to them, what kind of people do we become? Why would you stay with somebody that you know you shouldn't be with? And why not be with them for as long as it's good? Some people is good for a lifetime. And others, Some people yeah. it's not. Well, that's what Margaret Mead said. Margaret Mead said, the anthropologists that marriages should be renewed every five years or I the contract so. should just, just go yeah. that way. The you know, sound of frying. My God, I thought it was applause. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi and Frank may someday work oh, together on stage, yeah. suggesting the relationship of another what notable acting here? couple, Elizabeth <laughs> Taylor and Richard Burton. Who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? Actually, we talked about that show. I think we be, talked about that show. Or Richard and Liz and in, in the No, they uh, won't give us Richard and Liz because they're just, lives. they're too shocked. <laughs> they're too shocked. Remember when they look at him, they go, how did this happen? Because <laughs> we're the last two people in the world you would put in the same room. Come on now. I know it's true. You know it's true. No. You don't have to be no, nice, no, no, no. honey. You, and, you and, and Mayor Giuliani are the last two people I you see. Think? Yeah. See, I, went with him. I went with Mayor Giuliani. You worked with him? I went with him. He was my boyfriend. What's he like on a date? Well, he's very quiet. <laughs> he's very quiet. Doesn't say much. <laughs> you know, this was years and years and years. No, and you're years right. Ago. I'll, I'll give you that one. People That's were not. True. Whoopi, no. I don't think at the beginning of the '90s, if you were putting couples together, we would have predicted would be Goldberg and Frank Langella. No. 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 What do you think about the current craze of plastic surgery that's sweeping America? It's scary. It's scary. People are having a plastic surgery at like ten. <laughs> you know? Having what the look, hell are the kids the gonna look done. like? You know, are they gonna recognize their children when they have them? That's what I worry about. If you meet somebody who had a lot of plastic surgery and you have kids, what are they really gonna look like? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. And where's all that skin gone? Bank, I guess. <laughs> skin bank? But you see, it would be smart if they could recycle the skin for burn grafts. But they can't. There is something that happens to the skin and they can't use it. It, does, it can't, it can't but, be the You know, but it's our, it's our society. Look at the pictures that we worship. You know, look at Playboy. I just opened Playboy today. And I looked at these women and I thought to myself, who can look like this? You have to have a professional photographer and airbrush You have to have Vaseline, like. honey, on, on lenses everywhere. And As our lunch was winding down, we started to like think about a familiar after cool. lunch topic. <laughs> A cigarette. Yes. Which leads me to ask you this question. What do you think of smoking rules in restaurants in public? Well, you know what? I, I'm a smoker. And if I want to have a cigarette and I'm in a room that is this size, I go outside. I go outside. Because if you're not a smoker, you don't want the smell, I appreciate that. So you're what going, I don't like uh, what is? is I don't like the rudeness of non-smokers. I also don't like this idea that just because you don't smoke, it's supposed to be that easy for me to give up. See, because if you really, really believe that people in the workplace shouldn't smoke, then you, as the businessman, should provide patches for free. Free patches. Like condoms are free. Patches should be free. If people really feel that strongly about it, because it's not an easy Makes gig sense. to, no, to no. kick. It's an addiction. It is an addiction. But I am an addict. My name is Whoopi G, and... <laughs> <laughs> I've been smoking for. <laughs> no. Where's the patch, please? Yeah, no, they're coming over. The when we return, we'll find out about Whitney's dream meal and what's in her refrigerator right now. Yeah.
Anything for you? Yes, right. Welcome back to the Corner Table with Whoopi Goldberg. Um, what's in your refrigerator at home right now? Cat food. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you? Yes, for me. No, what's in the fridge now? There's probably uh, a bottle of Cristal and some stuff from Grace's Market and some stuff from the Vinegar Factory. What kind of stuff? Oh, you know, boar's head maple honey ham. I like Which it. I like. Carlsberg, Carlsberg cheese. Yeah. Uh, there's a really great sheep cheese that I got. Ecori, E mm -hmm. O K R I. That's what. That's what's there from memory. It tells you how long since I've been looking since at it. Since you opened it, right? I'm telling you. All right, another memory question. All right. Turn back the clock. You're like 12, 12 years old. What was the dinner table like in your house on a typical weeknight? Describe what it felt like at dinner. It felt pretty good. The vibe was very happy. It was a happy vibe. Everything you know? was good. Well, you know, until you look down. And what you were eating? Yeah. And that you didn't like that? Right. Because it was too healthy? Because it was very so healthy. You didn't have very the, healthy, man. Easy enough. All right, here's another one for you. Okay. This, is, this has to do with today. Right now, for some reason, the theater goes dark. There's not going to be a show tonight on Broadway. You can be beamed up and beamed down anywhere in the world for dinner tonight, where would you like to be having dinner? Who would you like to be with and what would you like to be having? I would like to be in my bed. In bed, okay. In bed, reading my John Saul book. What's the title? Well, it's a, it's a six-part horror book oh. that he's written. So right in bed, you don't want to go anywhere. You just want no, to be in bed. No, I don't want to go anywhere. Okay. I want to look over and see Frank That's good. surfing. Surfing the TV? Surfing the TV. That's a man. That's a real man. Okay. You know. And what was the last thing? And uh, what would you want to be having? Probably what I just had. <laughs> <laughs> More of the same, More right? of the same in a bag of wise potato chips. Now, if you come back here to this. <laughs> That's my big thing. See, you, you, you were that crunchy? I, well, you know, there's, when I was a little kid, wise potato chips with were. The owl. They, with the owl. Right. You could get the uh, the barbecue potato chips, or you could get the onion garlic ones, or you could get the plain ones. Those things are sense memories to me. The smell of potato chips means the neighborhood. You know, now everybody else's family was eating Lay's. <laughs> My family, <laughs> wise family, ate wise potato chips. Same with the bread. My family used Pepperidge Farm bread. Everybody else Wonder, ate Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread. Was there one thing that your mother made that when you would come home from school and you would smell it, you would go, I can't believe we're going to eat that. One dish that... Well, this is terrible. But she knows that <laughs> my brother and I talk about this all the time. My mother used to make German chocolate cake. And it was... Terrible. Bad chocolate cake? German chocolate cake. With the, you know, the coconut. It looked like barf. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like barf. With the cherries and the... No cherries. No, not it the was black just, forest cake. It was just... So my brother and I would slice it up, you know, and get rid of it. She thought we loved it. So she'd make more. <laughs> so as fast as we were getting rid of it, she was like baking more. We'd come home and it'd be like... Oh, you know. And what was the best thing your mother made? I mean, I know you've said, you know, like, the best thing, the best she, thing made, she made. She used to make, I have to sort of put it all in one thing. She used to make great picnic, you know, because we go on a circle line. Oh, that's nice. And we'd have the, the plastic holders, you know, and so we'd have spiced ham and cheese sandwiches, you know, with Miracle Whip. Because mm -hmm. I love Miracle Whip. Even and today? Today. Right. See, I can't handle the straight anything. straight kind, but not the low fat kind? No, 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 no. Give me the fat. The cholesterol clog me. You're working on it. Ah, please. Uh, and things that would be in the silver aluminum foil. And it was always a surprise when you opened it up because it was something you really wanted, yeah. you know? So she made great picnic. That's nice. Yeah. I remember every time my mother would make me food for lunch when I was a little kid at school, I'd end up eating it before lunchtime. That's how I was. Yeah. Now, here's one other thing to think about. Ten okay. years from now, oh, you come sure. back to the pink teacup for dinner. Yes. 
What do you want to say about what life has been like? Look, I am probably one of the most gifted observers of life and people. And so in observing myself, yeah. I realize that I'm one of the luckiest people on the face of the earth. I do what I want, I look the way I want, I sit with people I like, and the ones I don't like I don't have to be with. I got healthy kids, healthy grandkids. My mom's still with me, I got a great brother and a great man in my life, and a cat who loves me. So, you know, there, there's no, you, it doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. You know? Well, let's end this corner table with a little toast. What would you like to say to our TV Food Network viewers here on the Pink TV? La Chaim. A hundred years, Shanghai. Thank you.